Our final speaker today is Maurice Maury Pongrant. Maury grew up on a farm outside of O'Neill, Nebraska, where he attended a one-room schoolhouse until eighth grade. Uh, he went on to high school and played in the high school championship football team. Maury, sports have been a big part of Maury's life. Uh, from there, Maury went to Creighton University in Omaha, where he triple majored in math, physics, and philosophy, and did a minor in theology. Then he went on to uh, get a PhD from the University of Maryland and began a career with sounding rockets. Maury and his wife moved to Los Alamos in 1973. Maury worked with EG&G and Los Alamos National Laboratory for over 45 years. He was a four-time recipient of the Lionel Distinguished Performance Award. Maury has served on the Los Alamos County Council for seven terms. He served on the Los Alamos School Board. He was named a living treasure of Los Alamos in 2011. He has volunteered as a PA announcer for Los Alamos High School Athletics for over 30 years. And he was named a Los Alamos High School Athletic Hall of Fame in 2014. Lori is a member of Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish. He's a lector and Eucharistic minister. He's a member of the board of directors for the Kiwanis Club, the Los Alamos Public Schools Foundation, the Los Alamos Faith and Science Forum, the Laboratory Retiree Group, and the Juvenile Justice Advisory Board. And our appropriately titled final talk is The End of Everything. <laughs> Thank you, and I, I begged a, a slight modification. Uh, we're going to start out with a TED talk, and then we'll go to my PowerPoint. Since. So uh, thanks, Liz. And I want to express my gratitude for being invited to speak. It's a real honor to be with uh, this distinguished group of folks, and uh, we're going to hear about the end. And I very much appreciate that we uh, were able to show uh, Katie Mack's uh, talk because I think it sort of sets a contrast between the cosmologists, 90% of whom are atheists, and those of us who are Catholics and see something beyond that. Uh, and again, uh, Dan and I got into this uh, based on, on uh, first of all, on Katie Mack's book, and then uh, Dan reads prolifically, and I haven't finished my first coloring book yet, so uh, I have to rely on him for finding things. So uh, what I found was that uh, Katie Mack gave a very brutally frank talk uh, the universe, everything is dying. Uh, hot, dense plasmas. Went, expansion is speeding up. Uh, that most likely scenario is just this heat death, and that's a funny description of it. Some uh, people don't like that uh, notation, uh, where everything just sort of falls apart. And uh, it was the death of the universe more profound than our own human death. And the thing that sort of challenged her was that there's no legacy and no, our existence uh, will not matter. And so we're looking for some way to carry on. And I think that we as Catholics with faith know that there is a way to carry on. And this is from, from Mark. But in those days, after the suffering, the sun will be darkened. So uh, in the Bible, it tells us that, you know, the end is coming and it's going to go. So in our uh, Los Alamos Faith and Science Forum, when we give a talk, we're supposed to say what we're talking about and the so what of it. So uh, I start here with, you know, Thomas Aquinas taught us that God maintains everything in existence at every moment. And I had a, uh, a Jesuit uh, uh, giving me, I forget whether it's theology or philosophy, you know, his, the vision he used was God is holding us by a little string and, and he gives us existence. Uh, and so uh, since we're finite beings, uh, we could be gone in a flesh. And I'm just 
did you ever wonder how that might happen? Uh, because it, it is, uh, as a scientist, you know, you don't deny it, but you wonder exactly what's the mechanism. How's God going to do that? And so I, I've stolen from her book, uh, The End of Everything. So we'll discuss the obvious, the, the big crunch, heat death, and, and mainly the re relationship to faith comes into what is called vacuum decay. So there are, she, she enumerates uh, a number of possible endings to everything. Uh, the big crunch, you know, everything was going apart. Gravity's pretty strong, got a lot of time. Everything comes back together. Uh, heat death, that's also known as the big freeze. And, and it's just a total disaster, you know, where everything gets, you can't see lights anymore. And, and to some extent, her happiness was that we are sort of blessed here when we can see this. You know, the earlier people didn't know it. And, you know, millions of years from now, they won't be able to see even the, uh, the stars. So we blessed in a way. Uh, the big rip, uh, you know, expansion of the universe is just going to tear things apart. I'll go into this a little later. And vacuum decay. Now, there's also uh, in her book a discussion of a bounce. You know, it's everything come back together, bounce, and then come apart again. So let's go to the big crunch. Uh, you know, the expansion of the universe started out with a big bang. Uh, and Hubble, you know, measured things, found that. And for most of my life, we thought everything was expanding. And then along they come these guys and they, they uh, did some measurements and that's not quite right. Gravity is powerful, long range, a lot of time. So if gravity wins, the expansion reverses and everything smooshes together in a catastrophic big crunch. And that's very messy, very, <laughs> very high entropy process. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, Katie says that the uh, blue shifted radiation from this will burn the surfaces of stars. And she also says it's not likely. Now, a word about heat death. Since 1998, we know that expansion is speeding up, at least locally, uh, it seems to be speeding up. And they're still working on what the Hubble constant really is. Uh, so is this the cosmological constant? And you know, Einstein threw that in there, he wanted, that was a case where in fact, the, uh, we heard a discussion of this earlier, where our own, uh, sort of philosophical incl inclinations sometimes mess up our science. You know, uh, uh, Einstein sort of thought we had a, a steady universe, so he put in the cl uh, cosmological uh, constant so that things could stay steady, but uh, uh, the, we now have something called dark energy, and it looks like a pressure term on space, and it's spreading things out. And a few more words about heat death. The expansion continues forever, increasing ionization, inexorable decay, a long fade into darkness. That was Katie's words. And we won't be able to see other gal galaxies. Uh, we'll probably be gone by then because the sun will have gotten us. Uh, and it's sort of social distancing. <laughs> and I stole this from from Katie's book, you know, uh, things just spread out and you won't be able to see anything. Now, the big rip, on the other hand, is social distancing on steroids. Uh, the cosmic inflation speeds up and, you know, uh, the fabric of space expands like a whip, you know, a, a net. Things get farther apart, galaxies have shifted way out there. Even the planets will be shifted away from the sun. 
Parts of the earth will be shifted apart. So, you know, what I was thinking here is that <laughs> body parts will elongate, and it was my chance to be six feet tall, except then I realized that the tape measure would expand also. So that shot that down. Uh, atoms will rip apart. So the big rip is pretty catastrophic. Now we'll go to vacuum decay and the Higgs field. Now we heard about symmetry this morning, and, and uh, uh, Stephen knows way more about symmetry baking than I do, uh, but as a result of the uh, electroweak symmetry breaking, uh, we got this Higgs field. And it determines a number of fundamental constants. And uh, someone was talking about, you know, the paper, uh, I think it was Steve, about, you know, the, fun the anthropomorphic nature of the fundamental contents. And, you know, the charge on the electron mass of particles. And uh, the standard model says that the Higgs field, the Higgs vacuum, is not stable. It's in a metastable state. Uh-oh. And so here's from Katie's book a picture of the potential here. And this is the value of the Higgs field. And it, the fielding is that it's in a false, uh, a, 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 a temporary uh, lower state, and that either through fluctuations or by tunneling, it could go to a true vacuum, and uh, that would be catastrophic, a high energy event. And you know, at one time there was concern that some of those experiments at CERN needed to be stopped because they were going to trigger us out of this metastable state and into the uh, true vacuum of the Higgs field. And so there would, the theory says that there will be a bubble nucleation if a small part of the universe by chance reached that more stable uh, vacuum, that bubble would expand very rapidly. And uh, the universe as we know it would, would go away because the mass will go away and, and then that's of course my way to get back to my playing weight. Uh, but it wouldn't last very long. So that's the, uh, the, the question then is, okay, there's a bubble going to form. Is the bubble heaven? And I don't know. I just thought I'd throw that out because, <laughs> it, you know, it has some of the features of heaven. Uh, So we already went through that. And that one is the most interesting to me theologically because it happens instantaneously. That's how God snaps off this little string that's keeping me in, as a being and we're gone. Uh, and then I saw this, uh, it's uh, God flipping a coin. Uh, not sure if it's a good thing, he keeps saying okay best two out of three, and then he has this bada-boom, there goes the universe. Uh, the next uh, slide is just for when we uh, release these uh, view graphs, the references to the vacuum decay. A word about the bounce. Um, the, 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 uh, Neil, uh, Neil Turek says that cosmic inflation was not a one-off event, and it could all come back together. We could have a bounce. Uh, and it, it, what's interesting is uh, they, uh, it, 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 they're saying that inflation is just a theory, and I think that's true. Because it was some way we got all this smoothness in a very rapid inflation. And it, they actually apparently is a way with, by measuring the uh, the polarization of gravitational waves that you might be able to uh, to re resolve some of these uh, 
uh, questions. So in summary, uh, the big crunch says everything comes back together. Big crunch over here. This is the scale of the universe over time. Uh, big Bang. And, you know, what's interesting is the Maitre, a Jesuit, I have to be kind to the Jesuits. Uh, I, don't he, I don't think he was. Oh, I think he was a diocesan priest. He was a diocesan priest, not a Jesuit. Not a Lament. No. Oh, okay. So well, then I, I, I plug for the Jesuits. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he came up with this, and it fit, you know, uh, what was being observed very nicely. So there's acceleration going on now. Right about here we go, uh-oh. Uh, maybe, you know, for a long time, it was when I was, you know, studying, it was going to be a big crunch, you're all going to come back here. Uh, one of the options, of course, is the great big grip, the, the uh, social distancing on steroids. Mm -hmm. And then the sad one, of course, is the big freeze. Big crunch, heat death, big rip, vacuum decay and bounce. Now, just to close, uh, you know, John Polkinghorne, a uh, Anglican priest who is a, a physicist, uh, well aware of this, and he gave a sermon uh, on the end of the world and uh, talks about the gloomy predictions. Uh, and what he brings up, of course, is that we, as Christians, as Catholic Christians, have something more to look forward than the end of the universe. And uh, Jesus dealt with that in, the, in Mark, uh, and someone had this uh, quote on earlier, uh, God, not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And the theory is that if you and I matter to God once, and we do, then we must matter forever and ever. And that's it. I thank you for your attention. Questions from Wayne? Yeah. Vicki? What about environmental degradation? Isn't that happening on a much larger <coughs> scale? Much more like that? Long before the sun burns out. <laughs> Yeah, that is the, the wrong that, that is the end of the earth, not yeah. the end of the universe. Well, I don't and know. And for all, <laughs> for all of what we care, it probably does that. In a hundred thousand years, humans will have encompassed the entire the entire galaxy. Sorry. Powered by Tesla. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> And again, thank you very okay. much. Thank you.